I'm just going to say um, really just a couple of words. I'm not a futurologist, and um, just really just about the, the broader Irish media landscape and, uh, and what's been happening over the last few years. Um, we've spoken particularly in, in over the last few years about how as a small island nation, how open our economy is and how interconnected we are with the rest of the world. And the upside of this has been the flow of new ideas and different, different cultural influences which have helped to shape our society and our economy. And much of this influence has been from foreign media, UK newspapers, Danish TV <coughs> drama or whatever. But there is a downside to that openness and that's a downside to the openness of how the prevalence of non-Irish media can erode the influence of indigenous media and dilute our culture and our sense of connectedness as a society. And Irish people's connection to the political, democratic, economic and social life of our country is largely through our media. It's where we source much of our news and information. It's the main platform we use to debate and discuss issues that matter to us. Our indigenous media do matter. They matter a lot. And if we want to protect our sense of identity, of who we are, we need to make some tough choices about what we protect and how we do that. And looking across the main indigenous media platforms, the impact of the last five years of recession, rapidly changing technology and changing media consumption habits are having a huge impact on the viability of mainstream media. Um, we spoken early on about TV becoming much more fragmented. Noel Curran spoke only last week about how RTE is under huge pressure um, from the increasing level of opt-out advertising on UK and, uh, and satellite channels. The Minister mentioned 34 opt-out channels now in, uh, in Ireland. That's been obviously exacer exacerbated or compounded by the launch of Serview and the increasing penetration of satellite and cable. And that's all had the impact of further diluting um, the reach of indigenous TV. Um, newspapers are under similar pressure. Uh, we've seen the pre-packed liquidation of the Examiner Group recently, the restructuring of independent news and media, and that's highlighted the massive pressure on national papers from falling advertising revenues, but also falling circulation. And as we all know, younger people just don't buy newspapers. Readership is aging, and uh, many people are cutting back on purchasing newspapers as discretionary income is falling in many households. And local papers are in even bigger trouble. Circulation figures in a lot of local papers have dropped by up to 40%. Many of those papers are now coming off ABC, costs are being cut, content has been undermined, and circulation is falling <coughs> further. And if you look at new media platforms, and we talk a lot about, about new media and what's happening, Obviously, you know, smartphones and tablets and so on have undermined newspaper sales as people access news content on, online. But it hasn't actually resulted in the emergence of any major new indigenous media um, organizations. Most content that we access online is still accessed from traditional media organizations like the Irish Times, like RTE. And how long that can last um, and whether paywalls can bolster falling revenues remains to be seen. I think it's important to recognize, as we have earlier on, that through all this upheaval, radio has been the only constant. 84% of adults tuned into radio every day in 2003, and in 2013, 84% of adults are still tuning into radio every day. And that's after the birth of the iPhone, the iPad, Facebook, Twitter, digital TV. Um, radio is the only constant and has proven itself to be remarkably robust. And Coming from a local radio background, I confess to being obviously biased about local radio. It is unique in Europe. Since its introduction 20 years ago, it's grown to become a key piece of the social infrastructure in communities all over the country. It connects people and communities. It provides a platform for local discourse, local and community politics, and is now the dominant medium in many parts of the country with listenership far exceeding the reach of local papers and any national broadcast or print medium. So looking at what the future holds, there will undoubtedly be many more new media platforms, and FM may eventually lose its dominance. But right now, it's the most robust medium in a sea of change. So how do we value radio, and how do we support it? Do we stick with the current system whereby any content, whether it's a music program or current affairs program, produced by a state-owned media organization should be funded, the same content produced by an independent broadcaster should not be? 
Do we risk the unique local radio ecosystem that's grown up to become the backbone of local media across the country and the principle that such stations are privately owned and live or die at their own risk? At the core of the debate on funding of radio over the next um, few years, of the next 12 to 18 months indeed, will be the debate around what we do with the, the public service broadcasting charge, as, as John has alluded to earlier on. But I also accept what the Minister has said as well. I think that as an industry, we have a responsibility to change as well. Um, the market has evolved and we have to evolve. Um, we need to become much more broadly based media businesses. And in the case of, of local stations, we need to specialise in producing local content for any platform rather than just become or just continue to be local FM stations. I do think, though, that if we get the decisions on funding right, as has been pr proposed by this organisation over the last year or so, we will see a better future, particularly for local radio. We will see more and better local programming, more coverage of the things that matter to local communities, more local jobs, and the reward, the reward of a network of local stations that underpin our culture and our democratic structures. And I am optimistic. I think that we're making progress, and I think that um, I think that we're going to see more progress in the next um, in the next few months. And I think that will be um, the future, certainly for local radio. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.